Hi, and welcome to this introductory lesson about the new routing system of Next.js 13. This lesson is taken from my upcoming strongly typed Next.js course. So check the description for all the details and subscribe to the channel for more tutorials like this. Enjoy. Welcome back. We are now ready to initialize our uh, Next.js project uh, using TypeScript. So uh, let's visit uh, the Next.js documentation link I've provided in the lesson resources. And here you see the command we need to run to initialize a Next.js project based on TypeScript. And that is uh, yarn create next-app dash dash TypeScript. And you also have the other commands in case you want to use uh, other package managers uh, than uh, yarn. So I'll open my terminal and uh, I will paste this command and just add the name of the project. In my case, I will use the dev blog dash site and uh, I've put it inside the same parent folder in which I've put uh, the strapi server just for my convenience. Now I will confirm that I want to use uh, ESLint. So just press enter that I want to use the SRC directory. And uh, very important, we want to opt in for the experimental app directory. So with uh, your right arrow key, select uh, yes and then press enter. And we're going to also press enter for the import alias that basically allows us to use this uh, at symbol to import uh, more easily files inside our SRC directory. And it is uh, now installing all the dependencies. Once it's finished, uh, you just type code dev blog dash site to open the project in your code editor. One. Now, I want to give you an overview of the most important files we have in this initial code base, or more in depth, uh, an initial introduction to the new routing system introduced in Next.js version 13. This new system provides powerful features like layouts, nested routing, improvements uh, in uh, loading and error states management, and more. Take this just as an overview. All concepts will be much clearer as soon as we apply them one by one in our project. So don't worry if something sounds scary at this stage. The new routing system takes place inside this new directory called app. If you come from previous versions, Next13 Beta currently supports both this new approach and the old one based on the pages folder to allow incremental adoption. First thing to remember, within the app directory, each folder defines a root and the files within each folder define the UI for that root segment. For now, ignore the API folder we have here, that is a special folder we'll talk about later. Besides that, we don't have any other subfolder. So we only have one root corresponding to the base path with two UI files. But during the course, we'll create other subfolders to define nested routes. For example, if you want to define a UI for the path slash dashboard slash settings, you'll need to create a dashboard subfolder inside the app folder, and then another nested subfolder called settings inside of it and here create the UI files for that segment. By doing so, you can create a tree structure of folders and routes, as shown in this picture. Back to our current code base, let's talk about the first two UI files we have in our route. The layout is a wrapper around the main UI of the page which usually contains UI elements that are meant to be repeated for the current route and for all the sub-routes. The page file instead defines the core UI of the page that should be displayed for that route. So as an example, for the route path segment we're in, 
the layout will surely contain uh, the navbar and the footer, while the page will include the components of this particular page, in this case, the home page of our site. So, for example, the hero, the latest posts section, the newsletter form, and so forth. So remember, for each folder in the tree, the components you put in the layout file will wrap automatically the page on the same level and all the layouts and pages in subfolders. In our current situation, our root page will be wrapped inside the layout UI we define in the layout file. And here's a simplified example of what would be rendered if someone visits our site root path uh, at this moment with the page element as a child of the layout element. And what's very important is that this is recursively true also for each subfolder of your tree structure. So say we now add a blog subfolder inside our root app folder, as we'll actually do later on in the course. This will define a new path segment slash blog. And say we put there another layout besides uh, the page file. Well, in this case, if we visit uh, the slash blog path of our site, as you can see, the parent layout still wraps everything, but there is another level of uh, layout for the current route that wraps uh, the blog page. On the other hand, if you visit the root path, nothing has changed because you still see the page of that level wrapped only by its layout. So once again, each layout wraps the pages in the same folder and in all subfolders, but not in parent folders. This is very important. There are also other special files that can be defined and put in each root folder. They behave similarly to the layout as they define UI components that Next.js automatically puts as wrappers around the current page element. But while layouts and pages are generally always shown on screen, these other special files define custom UI elements displayed only when reacting to specific states. In particular, error.js or error.tsx and notfound.js are displayed when an error occurs. And the loading files define a loading state UI wrapper to display when, for example, the inner page is waiting for the response of a network request, or in general, when it's not yet available to be rendered. And once again, similarly to layout, at each level of your UI tree, you can, if you want, define more specialized versions of these special files. And Next.js will take care of using the one that is closer to the event that triggered it. And uh, by closer, I mean the closer parent. So for example, we generally we uh, define a root error file that will be rendered if an error occurs somewhere in your application UI tree. But if we want to show a more specific error UI for errors occurring in the profile page, we can define a new error file inside that subfolder. And now, if the error event occurs there or in any subroot, this specialized UI will be rendered instead. Otherwise, the one we've defined in the root will be rendered.